Have you ever gone out to shoot and was confused on what settings to have? Well, I'm gonna explain to you the most important things you need to know before you hit that record button, so stay tuned. What's up guys, if you're new here, I'm Mauricio. If you're interested in filmmaking, photography, you've come to the right place. So make sure you hit that like button down there. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you some things you need to know before you press that record button. We're gonna talk about frame rate, white balance, picture profile, shutter speed, ISO, what your subject is, setting focus, composition, and camera movement. So the first category we're gonna talk about is frame rate. Whether you wanna shoot at 24, 60 frames per second, ask yourself this, are you planning on slowing it down? If so, shoot at 60. But if you're not planning on slowing it down, then shoot at 24. Second on the list is white balance. This is a must learn because if you neglect white balance, your films won't look as good. So if you're shooting outside on a sunny day, most likely your white balance will be set at 5600 Kelvin. If you're shooting indoors, most likely it will be set at 3200 Kelvin. To make sure you always know your white balance, point the camera at something white and if it looks white, then your setting is correct. If it's looking too blue, bring up your white balance. If it's looking too orange, bring it down. Third thing on the list is picture profile. Most DSLRs have built-in presets in your camera, but if you're a beginner and you don't know much about color grading, I recommend choosing the standard profile since it's the most natural looking. But if you have more confidence, then you can make your own profile. Here's the settings that I have. It's gonna look a bit flat, but reasons for that is so it can have more dynamic range and I can color correct the look I want. Fourth on the list is shutter speed. A rule in filmmaking, you wanna make sure your shutter speed is double your frame rate. Meaning, if you're shooting at 24, your shutter must be at one over 50th. And if you're shooting at 60, your shutter must be at one over 25. But rules are meant to be broken. Sometimes I shoot at one over 1000 of a shutter speed Reason for that is because I want to keep my aperture as low as possible to have that depth of field. Which brings me to the fifth thing on this list, which is aperture. I always keep my aperture as low as possible because I like having that background blur. But in scenarios when I bring up my aperture is when I shoot landscape because I want everything to be in focus. Sixth on the list is ISO. You want to keep your ISO as low as possible because if you bring up your ISO, it will cause noise and grain and the quality is not going to look so great. Seventh on this list is subject. What do you want your viewers to focus on? Whether that's a person, a lake, building, tree, animal, whatever. You gotta make sure what your main focus is. This probably means you need a specific lens, angle, composition, or focus. When I mean by focus, which is number eight on this list, I'm referring to your set of focus. That's why I love shooting at a low f-stop because if your main subject is a person and the background is blurry, your subject stands out from the background. Also, make sure your subject is in focus because sometimes I see videos where some clips are out of focus and that one clip can ruin your entire film. Coming in at number nine is composition. This is probably the main reason why your films look amateur and not professional. Whether you're using the rule of thirds, leading lines, natural frames, or patterns and repetition, you gotta make sure you have a strong reason why you chose a specific composed image to make your shot look stunning. Last but not least, which is number 10, is camera movement. Figure out what's the best movement to tell your story or to make your subject look good. All right, now that we got all that covered, let's take it to the real world and see the settings I chose for this specific scene. All right, what's up guys? So right now we're on set and I'm gonna be showing you the settings I have right now. So I'm shooting with the Canon 80D. I'm shooting at 60 frames per second because I'm doing handheld and I want it to be smooth. My shutter speed is at 1600, aperture 2.8, ISO 100. The reason why my shutter speed is so high is because I don't have an ND filter and since I'm going to be shooting in slow-mo, the motion blur is not going to affect anything, like you're not going to notice it, but it's going to be tack sharp because there isn't going to be no motion blur. When I want my shutter speed high and I don't mind it, it's when I do slow-mo. When you want slow-mo, you want to see all the details, right? You don't want to see any motion blur. So when you have your shutter speed super high, the slow-mo is going to come out super, super clean. And I was with my white balance, I have a 5600 Kelvin picture profile I have it on I customize it so if you want to copy so if I want to get this exact picture profile I'll put it right here on screen and that's pretty much it on camera and for the movement composition focus the focus is on this building right here this one and composition it's more like a reveal I'm using 
these branches or leaves as foreground so I, that way I can review, so I can reveal the, the building. And uh, movement, I'm just gonna do a simple pan. So here's the example right here. And focal length is at 35 millimeter. And also I could zoom in a little bit closer to 50 millimeter and I could get a much, much closer shot. I'm using the row thirds. I'm placing the branches on the left side and in the right side, I'm placing my subject, which is this building. And I'm gonna shoot at a 50 millimeter focal length. So I wanna make sure the building is on the right side. And I could also go wider at 17 millimeter. So as you can see, when I do my movements, I do my, I spread my legs pretty wide. And then I, I don't like walk, but I just go like this, I move my waist. So for example, right here, like that. That's how you get the smooth shots. This is why composition is very, very important because this is what makes your films look professional, not amateur. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples on composition and why I chose that particular composition. And I'm gonna like overlay some lines so that way you can see. So here we go. All right, so that is pretty much it. So now let's go back to the Mauricio in the studio. All right, I hope now that you watch this video, you feel more confident when choosing the right settings when you're out shooting. If you wanna make your films more cinematic, I created six LUTs for Premiere Pro. It's only 10 bucks and the link will be down in the description below. So if you learned something out of this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and I'm out.